Oh, there we go. We back in action. All right. Are there, are there any other questions before we get started? Everybody feel what I'm saying as far as the positions? That way this narrows down on what Chiefs should be doing because you will have your own ability to do what you need to do within your field. All right, I guess that's a yes. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I guess I got to give you all more time to think about it. All right, so um, we're going to get started. Uh, let me see if I can pull up my information now. Dun, dun, dun. Got a little bit to go over, but definitely to explain Fahim L. Bay. There you go. Hey, I'll tell you what's going on. Yeah, that's got him up in the laundromat. laundromat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I knew I knew, you clothes, knew, brother. <laughs> knew you were yeah. doing something. I got caught up, brother. <laughs> I knew you did. I knew you did. I'm like, brother Fahim ain't here. I said, shoot, I'm talking in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Yeah. <laughs> But Brother Fahim, we were just talking about various positions in which that the Chief can take on. Um, we were talking about um, the Chief um, chief or Chief of um, Education. Right? And um, in this case, it would be the Chief of Language. Um, chief of Education, Chief of Language, all of that would be included in this. All right, and I, and I was saying that that probably would be something um, your um, up your um, alley, brother Fahim, because you um, probably one of the most um, knowledgeable as far as the language is concerned right now. So this is what I'm getting ready to go over today is the language. So in order to catch everybody up um, who are chiefs and who are um, chief potential, you know, to catch up um, to this information. So um, I'm going to start. Can everybody see the screen? I know you can't, Brother Fahim. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I can see it. All right. So um, this is just part of what we went over last week, but here are the five Kushites, Kemetic, Moorish names that ties Indian, Indo, Indian, Indios, Hindus, um, Achatanis to the sovereignty of America, El Bay Al, um, Day Al, and Ali. These five names belong to the five civilized tribes. These tribes are El, Cherokee, Bay, Choctaw, Day, Seminole, Al, Creek, and Ali, Chickasaw. The name El means God, force, or power. Bay means ruler or landlord. Day means knowledgeable. Al means the same as El. As Al, God, um, goddess, is feminine, Ali means the exalted or most high. These five civilized tribes came together to form a union called the Iroquois Confederation. This confederation formed the Articles of Confederation, which formed the American government. The Articles of Confederation became the United States Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and the Association of um, Articles of Association. The Articles of Association was written in 1774. All right, the Articles of um, the Declaration of Independence, which is called a Declaration, was written in 1776, and the Articles of Confederation didn't come until 1781-82. Um, then, of course, the Constitution for the United States of America didn't come about until 1789, ratified 1791. Some say 1991. Um, these documents are called the four constitutions, all right? So, Ben Shamish, Ben Shamish, 
Shemesh, Ben Shemesh means the sun of the sun. Ben means sun. Shemesh means sun. S-O-N-S-U-N. So it means the children or the sons of the sun. The term belongs to the period when the Jews were divided into sun and moon worshipers, Elites and Baalites. Elites and Baalites or Bilites. Right? The L's and the Bays. Now, who's these Jews? Well, according to Gamal Abdullah Nasir, the second president of the United Arab Republic, formerly president of the Republic of Egypt, he says the European claims to be the Jews, or nothing more than the Hebrew speaking Gentiles. The late president of Egypt said on television, you, the Jews, will never be able to live here in peace because you left here black but came back white. We can't accept you. And this is back in 1952. Okay? So... So here it is, black people in the Bible. For I have become like a wineskin in the smoke, yet I have not forgotten your statue. I am black. Our skin is black. And our feet like unto the brass, fine brass as if it were burnt in the furnace. I am overcome by the dark and by the black night which is covering my face. I am black. God formed a man from the dust of the ground. They sprinkle like the, they sparkle like the color of brownish brass. Their appearance was like burning coal of fire. The color of amber out of the midst of fire, out of the midst thereof came like the light, like the likeness of four living creatures. So these various Bible verses shows you that people in the Bible who they called the Jews, who actually the Hebrews and Israelites were people of color. They were Moors. All right. So this is what um, Nasir said. He said, we can never accept you. You left here black, but came back white. <laughs> All right. And that's obvious because you go to the right, far right, you'll see um, the Hebrews, Israelites, known as the Jews, and they're praying. But look at the nappy hair and their facial features. Look at this. All right. So, all right. So, let's get into this. The Imperial Empire Washtenaw de Dug the Money. The Washtenaw Moors of Washtenaw Nation of Moors are an indigenous peoples of North America. The Washita, otherwise known as the Omex, have been originally associated with the Washita. Accordingly, the Washita has been the primary group of a more general population of indigenous people identified in history as the Amaru, the Moors. Known in the Spanish and the French, the Washita has come to be known to the English as the Adina Hawelian people. Identified, check this out now, this is the part that's going to get us when we start reading. Uh, more here, identified with a Punic Iberian, the Punic Iberian affinity, maintaining an Aleutian Carthaginian heritage. As such, the Washtar has been associated with the Eastern and um, um, Algonquin Native Americans, having acquired an ancient Egyptian as well as a Punic script and vocabulary as they have associated as they appeared in the epigraphic records of North America. All right, this is um, Professor Ravana Bay uh, from the Washington Nations of Moors, a historical synopsis. So keep in mind, we're Eastern Algonquin. That's who we associated with the Eastern Algonquin, but our script is a Punic Iberian affinity, um, Aleutian um, 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 Adolution Carthaginian heritage all right is an ancient Egyptian as well as Punic script and vocabulary so this tells us the language in the older documents some of those may have we have an excerpt from the Edwin Smith surgical papyrus 
This is housed in the New York Academy of Medicine, 1500 to 1600 BC. Look at this script. Look at this script, y'all. Remember this script. Everybody think they have the script somewhat memorized as far as what you're seeing here. This is ancient Egyptian. I'm getting ready to show you something. <laughs> this is also ancient Egyptian or commandment. Ali? Yes. Uh, so that means that uh, Hannibal Bakar is, uh, uh, is one of our ancestors, right? Exactly. Okay. So I'll this is what, out again. Okay. This is what's called the Moritic. Moritic can only come from the Meru. And who are the Merus? The Merus are the Americans. Remember we showed you that um, last week that M-E-R-U is M-E-R-O which is A-M-E-R-U so forth and so on. M-A-M-A-R-U So this is an example of the Moritic or the Pantan script, 800 BC, 600 AD. Now, when you look at this, you start seeing how Arabic came into play. A lot of this looks like Arabic. This looks like Hebrew. Okay. Writing still the same. Left, I mean, right, left, and right. Yep. They both write. They both were written right to left. Okay. So Arabic and Hebrew are the same language, just different dialect. <laughs> and I'm getting ready to show you something more as we move into the script in which that we will be writing in. So here, although many scholars contend that the heretic or the heretic um, developed as an entirely distinct script from the Metronetor, the obvious visual similarity proved that it is also a somewhat simplified form of Metronetor that was mainly used for more administrative and scientific documents without the dynastic history of both Kemen and Kush, 3200 BC to 600 AD. Notice that this is during the same time as 800 BC to 600 AD. Hold up, that's what we just seen. 3200 BC to 600 AD. And uh oh, 1500 to 1600 BC. Uh oh, 3200 BC to 600 AD. Both of these scripts was written Arabic, Hebrew, and Arabic script coming from Metru It was both written during the time of the Kemet and Kush dynastic period. The Kushite, Kemetic, Hermetic, Metrunetur script, Metrunetur or Medunetur script was developed by the ancient Egyptians priesthood, who was known as the Tassetians and the Tanesians. Kushites is derived from the ancient Moritic script, 800 BC to 600 AD. In other words, the ancient Egyptians borrowed the script, and it is the origin of Semitic languages such as Phoenician, which is Canaanite. Oh, shit. Hold up. What did Prophet Nobodrali say that who we were? He said that we was Moabites, but why did he name his first temple Moab Temple then? He named it Canaanite Temple. The Canaanites is the biblical term, but the historical term is known as the Phoenicians. The Phoenicians. Right? So it is the origin of Semitic languages such as Phoenician, which is Canaanite, Hebrew, which is nothing more than ancient Phoenician, and Hebrew were the same. Aramaic and specifically Arabic. 
<laughs> so Hebrew and Arabic are once again the same language, just different dialects. Just like if you go to Jamaica, they speak Pakwa, or Pakwa, how they speak, uh, they, the way that they speak, I think it's Pakwa, something like that. And they'll go to, and you know what they're saying. Or you go down south, shit, you come from the north and come down south, and they start talking about up yonder and, you know, and, and you know, and all those types of terms, and you be like, up yonder, up, <laughs> you know, you're from the north. Oh, oh, okay, I know what you mean. Oh, you mean um, up there. <laughs> <laughs> They speak in, they speak in English. That's English. Up yonder, up is an English word. Yonder is an English word. But it put up yonder to me over there. So it's still English, same language, but what? Different dialect. You get it? Like the word shalom is Hebrew, but the word in Arabic is salam. Shalom is more masculine. Salam is more feminine. Both the same language because they both means what? Peace. Shalom alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Well, hold up. God damn it. What's the difference? <laughs> if I say shalom alaikum, which is Hebrew, and then assalamu alaikum, which is Arabic, what's the difference? They both mean peace be unto you. So, Hebrew and Arabic are the same language, different dialect, and they both are derived from Phoenician, which is Canaanite. Okay, let's continue on. I think I made my point clear. So, of the spoken language of the Capitone Woolly Head Moors, misnomer Native Americans, Indians, Arabic. Chaldean and Hebrew was spoken in the 1490s in the West Indies, y'all. This is ref this reference is in Christopher on Christopher Cologne's or Cristobal Cologne known as Christopher Columbus diaries. For the sending of he, he sent interpreters when he landed in Cuba to speak to the Cub to the king of Cuba. To the king of Cuba. Who get them on the shores? And they spoke Arabic, Chaldean, and Hebrew. This is according to Africa and the Discovery of America by Dr. Um, Le um, Leo Weiner, Harvard professor. Why would Columbus have to send interpreters who spoke Arabic, Chaldean, and Hebrew in Cuba? And the word Cuba is the same word as Kaaba. Because on the hill, they seen the moss. They seen moss on the, hit, on the um, hills of Cuba. Cuba is Kaaba, which means that this was an Islamic territory. This is why they were speaking Arabic, Chaldean, and Hebrew. All right, we'll read further. Egyptian Romani on page 150 states that the Mobi, Mobi region was also the source of the Arabic, Hebrew, and uh, um, Aramaic Seretic dialects. Who? The, Mo, the Moabi, the Mobi, the Moabi region was the source of Arabic, Hebrew, Aramaic, Seretic languages, which were offshoots of the ancient Egyptian language. Holy shit. There it is. Hebrew in Arabic is nothing more than offshoots of the ancient Egyptian language. You still, if you speak Hebrew, if you speak Arabic, you are speaking ancient Egyptian language. You are speaking the metu <laughs> All right now. That is the mother tongue. The mother tongue is ancient Egyptian language. The metu nature is the mother tongue. This is why I say it's Arabic is the mother tongue. This is why they say Hebrew is the mother tongue. But they are offshoots of the original mother tongue, which is the ancient Egyptian language. 
And this is coming. Ibn Hazim died in um, 1064. The medieval Arabic scholar of Cordoba recognized that Aramaic, Soretic Hebrew, and Arabic were kindred dialects derived from the Medur, the, Mo, the Mudur. The Mudur is the Medunetur, the dialect in which the Quran had been disclosed. So the Quran originally was revealed in the Madur, which is the Medunetur. Somebody mute the background. Somebody mute the background, please. So later in chapter 12, we will show that Madur is the ancient Egyptian term meaning language, and that all three languages, dialects, are offshoots of the ancient Egyptian language. The Moorish alliance never forget their Mobile origin, Moabi. Christian chronicles sometimes refer to the al Mordids as Moabites. There are numerous references to the Moabites in the chronic um, Edephos um, Fasi. The reference or to paragraph and the reference to Ali and to Texufenus as kings of the Moabites would seem to support the theories that the term refers to al Mohavites. Here it is. This is Egyptian Romania, now page 169. Traces the history of the Arabic language will lead us to ancient Egypt. See, this is what these Arabs don't want you to know. This is what these Hebrews don't want you to know. That all of this goes back to ancient Egypt. They act as if they was created in a goddamn vacuum. They're lying. Like they just to themselves. They just made it up. No, you got an origin. And I know your origin. It's ancient Egypt. It's ancient Egypt. All right. We come down. The ancient Egyptian control Mo Moabi region is regarded as the home of the Medur language, the forerunner of Arabic. The name Madur is abbreviated form of the ancient Egyptian term Medunetur, meaning the word language of the angels, gods. This is no coincidence that the Muslims say that Arabic is the language of angels in imitation of the ancient Egyptian Metunetur. The people of this ancient Egyptian colony, Moabi, spoke and wrote the Egyptian language. Scripts found in Moabi region looks exactly like the ancient Egyptian demonic, demotic, excuse me, style of writing. Page 186 to 87. The Egyptians were the only people in the Moabi region who had an available written surface papyri and is a, and is associated written tools of pens and ink when ancient egypt lost power in asia there was no one to maintain a literal metal language and as a result no more than a handful of written text was found because writing was is not part of the nomadic life a fact that was also affirmed by Ibn Kadon in his um, Muskadima, as shown in the last chapter of this book, which is this Egyptian Romani. So, Hebrew and Arabic, once, a, once again, y'all, here's another form of what we now will look at to be that of Arabic. This is the demotic script that we're talking about. As you see, this is like Arabic. This is 200 BC. Remember, we showed you that between 3200 BC to 600 AD, which all of these written styles were available, Hebrew, which actually just so like Hebrew, which actually in the original script would be Phoenician, Canaanite, then we have what we're going to start looking more Arabic, 800 BC to 600 AD, Moritic script, and then you have the Demotic script, 
200 BC. This is housed in the British Museum. My wife and I have seen this. So it is particularly important to know that the Demotic script was introduced in the Sumeri in, in the 25th dynastic period when the Nubians and Kushites was there in origins. It's also worth mentioning that the Demotic is the second script used from the famous Rosetta Stone, which has been used by linguistics to de decipher the older metronature, and the Demotic is the basis for later scripts such as Arabic, as you can see. See, this is research. This is how you know what's really going on and what your people wrote. Oh, now we get to the Hooray script. What does this look more like? This look begin to start even looking more like Arabic. These looks like Arabic. Hebrew, Phoenician. All of these connected, same language. Ancient Kufic script was employed for the Arabic language before the modern Arabic came into general use. This example dates from approximately 700 AD, and this occurred in Nevada, the so-called United States, where it was mistaken for American Indian morphings of about 1000 BC. And this is Kufic, which is a form of Arabic. Once again, here it is from the heretic script. We know that a sum of 565 names, 484 in America, and 81 in Canada of villages, towns, cities, mountains, lakes, rivers, etc., etc., are etymologically Arabic. Yes. Designated by locals long before the arrival of Columbus. Many of these names are in fact the same as the names of Islamic places, Mecca in India, in, um, in um, Indiana. Medina in Idaho, Medina in New York, Medina and Hassan in North Dakota, Medina in Ohio, Medina in Tennessee, Medina in Texas, Medina and Alva in Ontario. Ontario. <laughs> Muhammad in Illinois and Mona in Utah. And just a few noticeable names at the Outset, a closer analysis of the names of the um, native tribes will immediately reveal their Arabic etymology ancestry. And then um, Ansazi, Apache, Arawak, Arakana, Colvin, Cherokee, Cree, Hohokam, Yupa, Hopi, Mecca. Mohique, Mohawk, Nasi, Nasa, Nazca, excuse me, Zulu, and Zuni are only a few. Islam in America is everywhere. One just has to look for it. From Khalifa Harinia, which is California, to Alabama, Alabama, to Tallahassee, Tallahassee, to Medina, Ohio, to Morristown, New Jersey, to Islam, um, Islam, Florida, Florida, to Alhambra, California. Muslims have left an impact on the country. So, fact: the language of the Indians, aka Negroes, equals Algonquin and Arabic. Algonquin and Arabic. It, or essentially the same language which goes back to Metronature. This is from the book, The Real Indians is Negroes, AKA the Black Amores by Dr. Ali Muhammad. Facts, Dr. Barry Fell, one of Fell's co um, colleagues, bought him a book from Harvard uh, Winninger Library that was written by missionary priests and published in 1866. It contains a document titled The Lord's Prayer in Micmac, Hieroglyphics. Fell saw, saw that at least half of these hieroglyphics were Egyptian. He was able to prove from the written testimony of, of other priests that the Micmac were using their writing when the first missionaries arrived. 
because remember, you know, they told us that there was a right system for Na- for um, for Native Americans. They have a right system. Then how the hell are these Micmac using hieroglyphics? In fact, all the northern Algonquins, the families of tribes to which that the Micmac belong, apparently used it. So not just them, all all of the Negroes up north used it. <laughs> Having acquired this language from Libyan mariners and preserved it for over 1,000 years. As Fell began to study the Algonquin language, she found hundreds of Egyptian words in the dialect of the northern of the northeastern Algonquins. Remember, the Watchtower is related to the Algonquins, the eastern Algonquins. So that means that we spoke what? The Egyptian words and dialects too. This is why the word Watchtower come from the Egyptian word Utah, um, um Washeta. Barry Fall suggests that Egypt might have been in intense contact with North Africa is strongly suggested by the huge boats which were discovered in 1950 adjacent to Khufu Great Pyramid. Ancient Egyptian Magazine. Here's the Micmac language and here's the Ancient Egyptian language. You see goodness, beauty, trick, um, truth, and you see the word holy right here. Nearly the same glyph, you see heaven. Nearly the same glyph, five pointed star, right? You see oil, full, a bowl. You see exalted one, a pyramid, um, for God. There is evidence of ancient Egyptians found in Maine. They were known as the Nick, uh, uh, Nicknack, which is the Micmac. Nicknack, Micmac, give a dog a bone. All right? But this is. <laughs> Indians, which Dr. McDonald stated were the Algonquin or Iroquois race. So see, now they don't know the Iroquois from the Algonquin because the Iroquois is nothing but an out branch of the Iro- um, Algonquin. The Iroquois was the Cherokee. And remember, the Cherokee was part of the Tour Treaty. Please mute your background. There has also been Egyptian hieroglyphics Found on Long Island. That's New York. <laughs> While the ancient Liberian language of the settlers has been found in Quebec, Canada, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, Oklahoma, California, Texas, and New York. Damn, we was all over the goddamn place doing high gl- um, Egyptian hieroglyphics. As the Algonquin and Iroquois races, or race, because there's only one, and that's the Algonquin, even though Iroquois is the outgrowth of the Algonquin. In the book by Barry Ford, America, B.C., he shows you these glyphs. And what he said, these are examples of Micmac and ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics of similar forms. This is what you're seeing. In the middle is Micmac. To the right of it is ancient Egyptian. And then you see to the left is the meaning. Name is drawn in the same as the... Katush. Please mute your background, please. All right, so as you see here to the to the right, name, mountains, metal, silver, gold, stone, sand, dust, sea, lake, river, to be like all right. Um, the Pharaoh ruler that men, ram, sheep, mouth, walk, go, flowing to become also 
out of, out from me, my, thou, thee, all right? It was that stern there, two bit to them. But as you see here, these are the examples of the Micmac Paddywhack ancient Egyptian bones writings. All right? Basically the same. So we know that the Micmac are a tribe of Algonquin Indians. Here we go, keep coming back to Algonquin over and over again. But these are niggas writing Egyptian. So how can you be Algonquin or Micmac when you write an Egyptian? Wouldn't that make you Egyptian? Hmm. Well, see, this proves the point that Professor Walter Williams has been telling us the whole time when he told us that we are the Egyptians. Many, many thought the nigga was crazy. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Is that where the came from? That cat, that bone, this go front end. Is that what your phone going in and out, goddess. We can't hear you. Your phone going in and out. Oh, I was saying it's a big rag. Because I used to say that when I have like a game to play. Um, uh, brother used to say Nick that crack. Right. Well, yeah, right, right. That was that was me joking, but yeah, that's really what we used to say. Nick Nack, Patty Whack, give a dog a bone. But we ain't know Nick Nack well, actually was the Nick Mac, which was actually a tribe, which was talking about you and your ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! We always doing that. We are always doing that. We we damn lynch on to these damn cracker sayings, and then we start making we thinking some damn nice little song, and we come to find out that the shit was talking about us the whole time. What about wow. the New York, the New York Knicks? Right, the New York Knicks. That comes from Nick McMack or Nick Knack. It comes from the New York Knicks. Is Nick, and I lived off a of Knickerbocker growing up, off of Harmon Street. Right, right, the street over from me was Knickerbocker, the Knicks, where they got the names from. So I grew up in the damn McMack or Nick Knack, Patty Whack community. <laughs> So right here, Micmac or a tribe of Algonquin Indians inhabiting Acadia, the eastern province of Canada, and they are closely related to various tribes of Maine, commonly known as who? The Wabanaki. Oh, this is where Benjamin Banneker get his name from, y'all. Remember, Benjamin Banneker was a Dogon, descendant of a Dogon. Who was who? The Egyptians. See how all this connects? See, this is how you got to be able to do your information, and this is right hemisphere thinking. This ain't left hemisphere thinking. This ain't us trying to break apart and say, oh, I'm just a Moor. Oh, I'm just an Indian. Oh, I'm just a... And this is the stupid shit that's going on. People who following Dane Calloway, people who's following Young Pharaoh, people who's following all these people. They dissing the Moors as if the Moors um, sold everybody out. No, the Moors was the last vestige in hope of us being saved, and instead of all of us getting slaughtered and killed by these damn crazy ass crackers, we said, look, we'll do a Masonic deal with you. We know that we're the Moors. If we come back to knowledge and consciousness, you just give us the breadcrumbs and we put this shit back together again and you see who we really are. So the Masonic code was to hold the Moors down, never allow for them to rise again. We will never teach their children who they really are. It don't matter because we all who we say we are, like Prophet Nobodrali told us, that we all who we say that we are, we are the mothers and fathers of the ancient Moabites. And because the mothers and fathers are from the ancient Moabites, I should say, we are the children of the ancient Moabites. And we are who our forefathers were. More bites. So this is showing us. This is why, no no matter how strong the Masonic code is for the Europeans and Albions, we can always break through that threshold by simply reading and gathering the pieces. That's if we really want the pieces. Most of these Negroes out here, like the um um 
brother from Turtle Island, um, have their own agenda, saying that they're all the Napi, but then they're not Moors. And I'm like, nigga, historically, the Napis were the Moors. <laughs> How the hell are you damn trying to break that shit across apart? This is some, um, once again, right hemisphere thinking. I mean, left hemisphere thinking. But right hemisphere thinking would tell us something else. So here, the statement combines with a recorded claim by the 18th century French priest, Pierre Melendlor, that he personally invented the Micmac hieroglyphics, seems to establish the reputed uh, modern, uh, modernity of the written system. Had Melendlori then studied Egyptian hieroglyphics in order to invent his Micmac language or system, he'd check a date soon show that this would be impossible for Melendard died in 1762, 61 years before Chaponian published his first decipherment of the Egyptian hieroglyphics. Just like they tampered with the Bible and they got the word Kushite in the Bible. But there's no way that Kushite could be in the Bible <laughs> because it wasn't deciphered until Chaponi, Chapaloni, Chapaponi. How would we say his name? Chump. Chump, Chaponi. <laughs> Published his five decipherments of the Egyptian hieroglyphics. Any resemblance between his system and that of the Egyptians would have been due to a pure chance. So this is what is being said. So this guy, Father um, Mallard, who claimed that he wrote the Micmac language is a goddamn liar. What they was trying to do is coerce our system, our sciences once again. Oh, the Indians have no writing system. Them niggas can't read. But this is what they'll tell you today. Oh, the Native Americans didn't have a writing system. But then who the fuck is the Algonquin Micmacs? The Micmacs Algonquins, who, who are they? They didn't have a writing system. What, is the, what the fuck am I looking at here on the left-hand side? That's a writing system. And matter of fact, that's the Egyptian writing system. So the Micmacs were Egyptian. The Wabanaki are Egyptians. The Dogons. Who they claim nowadays that Benjamin Banneke was. The word Banneke, that's his name right there. Banneke. That's the tribe he was from. His tribal connection tribe was in, in Massachusetts. Even though they claimed that he was in Maryland. See, these are all the clues. I'm telling you, this Masonic shit is over. And I'm wearing my Masonic hat today. Because I'm getting it. You be getting this. So, right here. All right, so the Algonquin, we're just going to read this. There's a rough change occurred, and the word for tree in the Wabanaki dialect, the name became Abosi, Abasi. Now, Abasi means foreman in the Siberian tongue. So, why does it designate tree? In New England, the answer is simple. It is not a Siberian word at all, but instead a well-known Semitic word, meaning tree, and still in use this very day among the Hebrew-speaking people of Israel, the language of which is related to Phoenician, the Canaanites. Uh-oh. So, the Wabanaki were also Phoenicians who are the ancient Egyptians. The Phoenicians are nothing more than Egyptians, y'all. This is why Nobu Ali said he was an Egyptian adept. Yet he was a Moor. Yet he had a Canaanite temple. Because all of this is the same. Evidently, in this case, as in others, the needed 
Um, that need not be listed here. The oldest Siberian word of the Algonquin has been displaced in the East by the word introduced from the Mediterranean lands. Similar evidence is provided by many hundreds of other words of clearly Semitic origin found in the moderate Wabanaki language, but lacking from the Western dialect of, of Algonquin, which apparently the Phoenicians did not penetrate, or did they? We get ready to find out, y'all. The Celtic words is far fewer in East Algonquin dialect, and mo most of them relates to typographic features as discussed in previous chapter. The following table lists some other words of probably Celtic origin that are still in use in the Northeastern Algonquin dialect. So, who they're talking about? All this is the same. And if you go to Wonderful Ethiopians of the Ancient Kushite Empire by Drusilla Dungy Houston, published in 1926, sure, this information is on in 1926. In Africa, the Ethiopians, the Egyptians, the Liberians, the Canaanites, and the Phoenicians. Where was they at? In Africa. And they was all descendants of who? Ham. They were a black and dark colored race and the pioneers of our civilization. What civilization? Hold up, she won't tell you. Check this out. They were emphatically the monument builders, the monument builders meet the mound builders, on the plains of Shinar and the valley of the Niles from Meru, uh-oh, to Memphis. In southern Arabia, they erected wonderful edifacts. Or edifact. It says right here, they were responsible for the monuments that dot southern Siberia and in America. What? Hold up, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go back. In Africa, the Ethiopians, the Egyptians, the Liberians, the Canaanites, and the Phoenicians were all descendants of Ham. In other words, the same people. Oh, we're going to say that again. Because, see, people get confused. But, see, Drus Drusilla, she was on point, goddammit. All this goddamn separation shit. That's the same people. She's on point. The Ethiopians, the Egyptians, the Liberians, the Canaanites, the Phoenicians, all came from the same people. They was known as the descendants of Ham. But where else did they go? She said they were responsible for the monuments that died in southern Siberia and in America along the valley of the Mississippi, what? Down to Mexico, what? And in Peru. Their images and monuments stand as voiceless witnesses. This was the ancient Kushite Empire of Ethiopia that covered three worlds. That covered three worlds. She told you the worlds. Siberia, which is Asia, and America. God damn it, she told you. Now check that out. See, there's no more confusion. When you go and do the research, this shit is over. Right here, Upper Tamari, or Tamaru, Tamaru, Upper Tamaru, Sinatic, ancient Moabite or Phoenician, hold up, the ancient Moabite Phoenician in Upper Kemet? Remember, it's the same information, y'all. Peace. Is the same information, y'all. So it says, what Europeans call Paleo-Hebrew is nothing but more by Phoenician. So you're talking about ancient Hebrew, that's nothing but more by Phoenician. The same ancient script is found to be used the same ancient script is found to be used on the ancient Moabite stone. More importantly, from the moment notice, the early Greek some letters are reversed and others are copy versions of Moabite Phoenician script. For now, we are concerned with two letters, the M and the R, because both have retained the phonetic sounds and feel as the inherited meaning of metu nature, M meaning water, source of life, and head or ruler. 
So right here, North America was inhabited by Israelites 1,000 years or more before 1492. Wow. And what did these Hebrews speak? These Israelites speak? These Jews, black Jews speak? What do they speak? These Moorish Jews, Israelites, Hebrews speak? The Phoenicians were the city states Tyre and Sidon and had a far-fledged empire on land and sea. They were the best sellers in the ancient world at that time. And they saw the rise of David and Israel and made an alliance with them. This is biblical. They were a common race of Semitic people. They also had a common language. Well, hold up. So they were Semitic and Hermetic at the same time. There were only dialect differences between the Hebrew and the Phoenician tongue. First Kings 17, 9, 16 relates where Elijah met with a Phoenician or Sidonia widow and they had immediate discourse with no difficulty at all in communication. Wow. Hey, 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 Mo, the Bible that Ruth was a Moabite? Yeah, Ruth is a Moabite, exactly. That's, that's biblical. But I'm showing the historical connections more primarily because the historical connection will be proven. True, true, true. All right, so let's see what language. So we now we now know what the Micmac or Nicknack language was on um, um, what they studied. They studied ancient Egyptian, which all connected to the Paleo Hebrew, Aramaic, and Arabic. We now know that. Well, that was Algonquin. Remember. The Washita was related to the Eastern Algonquin. That means we too spoke an Algonquin language. What was it? We'll get to it in a second. So we know that the Yamasis are the direct descendants of the Omex through the Washita Moors. All right? The Yamasis are connected to us. Those are our children. Matter of fact, that is the priesthood of the Washita. It's the Yamasis. That's the priesthood. Somebody mute the background, please. All right, so Washington, all right? This is who they are. The Yamasee is the mother tribe of Creek, Seminoles, Appalachee, Choctaw, Cherokee, um, Chickasaw, Catawba, and, Ch and Ch Cherokee. That's the mother tribe. So here we have the Washita, the Omex, our child is the Yamasi, and from the Yamasi, which is the mother tribe of the um, Creek, we get the Seminoles, we get the Appalachee, we get the Choctaw, we get the Ch Chickasaw, the Catawba, and the Cherokee. The so-called five civilized tribes, they come from us. This is why we was in treaty with them, as I showed you earlier. They didn't want to talk about the Yamasi Creek. The Yamasi comes from the um, other creek. That was the priesthood. The word Yamasi is Yamashia. Uh-oh, that's Hebrew. Yamashia means what? Oh, Savior. It was our saviors. Do you know that the Yamasi waged war against the cracker for 100 years and was um, never beaten, was not defeated? We'll continue on. So right here, so the Washington Moors are the so-called lost tribes of Indians that were spoken of in history books. Yes, they are the hidden tribes that were the descendants of the Olmec Tortex of Mexico. The Washita tribes are also the ancestors of such tribes as the Pawnee, the Osage, the Creek, the Seminole, the Chickasaw, um, the um, Cherokee, the Catawba, the Comanche, the Nice Pierce, the Tuscarora, the Genesis, um, the Matapan, Pawnee, the Powhatan, the Micmac, the Micmac Paddywhack. <laughs> 
the Lumbee, the Mandan, the Blackfoot, the Nightrees, Keith, the Chickasaw, and many more tribes. So that means that we all spoke the same language. What language did we just finish showing that the Micmac used? The ancient Egyptian language. Now we're going to see what language that the Yamases used. Let's look. Here it is. A form of the ancient Egyptian language, which in here we call it Phoenician or archaic Hebrew. Paleo Hebrew, ancient Hebrew, which is Aramaic, Phoenician. Here it is. Look at these letters. Remember, I showed you earlier to look at these letters. Remember these letters coming from ancient Egypt? They back to 1500, 1600 BC. Remember these letters? Look at these. And now, look at these. It's the same letters. Same letters. This is the Yamasic language. So the Yamasi speaks the same language of Algonquin as the Micmac, which is ancient Egyptian language. See, I'm teaching you what they took away from us. We have a language, y'all. And we've been, and we've been dilly-dallying in certain sects in which I was given some information but never connected it all together. I was a Muslim, so I was speaking Arabic. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. La ilaha illallah wa tuhu la shadika lahu. Alhamdulillah, he rabbi al I'm speaking Arabic. I'm speaking Arabic, but not knowing that the same language that I'm talking is in my native tongue here in America. So this is the Yamasi language. We've seen what the Micmacs were talking about, and they both, both of these, both of these, tribes, nations, were Algonquin. Yep. So let's see now. Let's look at these letters. Oh, we're going to American BC. Ancient settlers in the New World by Barry Fall. The fell. He tells you here. Check this out. He said the first authentic find of an engraved Phoenician tablet in an American archaeological context was that of the um, Tartessian Inscriptions found in 1838. This tablet was um, excavated from a burial chamber found at the base of Mammoth Mound. A mound, y'all, at the base of the mound. Phoenicia writing in Moundsville, West Virginia. God damn it. Uh oh. So they tell you that these mound builders, who are the mound builders? The Washington of the mound builders. We just showed you that the Yamasi were part of the Washita. We just showed you that the Micmac was part of the Washita. We showed you last week that the five civilized tribes were part of the Washita. We are the Washita people, goddammit. And what language do you speak? Here it is. Let's go to it. It says the Iberians before the arrival of the Phoenician traders in Spain, but like many colonial people, they had acquired the language of their colonizers. In this case, the Phoenicians and some of their late, um, or at least their chieftains, were literally in the um, Tartessian manner of writing the Phoenic. Phoenician or Punic tongue. Well, hold up. The Punic tongue, where did I see that? Oh, I think I seen that when we was trying to figure out what was said concerning the Washoe. Oh, here it is. Known to the Spanish and the French, the Washoe has come to be known as the English, as the Howellian, Adina Howellian people identified with the Punic Iberian affinity yeah, I'm maintaining the evolution. Everybody, please mute your background. You know better. Stop saying. Please mute your background. Please mute your background. We are taping this class, and we need the least amount of interruptions as possible. 
All right, so here, maintaining the evolution, Carthaginian language. What's the language? The Washoe has been associated with the Eastern Algonquin Native Americans having acquired an ancient Egyptian as well as a Punic. Oh, there it is. As well as a Punic script and vocabulary. Well, goddamn, this is everything that I'm showing you. This is the script here that I'm showing you. This is the script. Here it is. What script is that? This is the exact same script that we find that the Yamasis was using. The same script that the Micmac was using. God damn it. Here it is. The discovery of the so-called um, Prada um, La It's Paleo Hebraic. Prada inscription is Phoenician script engraved on stone according to um, Para Hyper Provident Brazil in 1886. So it wasn't just here in North America. This shit was in South America too. <laughs> the same script. The same script. Exactly. It's all the same. Here it is. Look at this script again of the Yamasis. And look at this script. Same exact script. Okay, we continue on. Here's the script. The script all the way in Iowa. I don't even know any Negroes today in Iowa, but we was there. <laughs> the Iowa inscription was found on Devonport in 1874, and it was written in the Iberian alphabet whose sound values were determined in Spain. So years later, failure to identify the Iowan alphabet led archaeologists up until now to suppose that the Davenport um, were fraudulent. Was it, is it really? How can it be fraudulent when the shit is written plainly in Phoenician and Punic? It's in Punic. There it is. There it is. And who is in Spain? You had the you had the Spanish Jews. We keep running into it, no matter where we go. The Liberians, who they call the Phoenicians, the Punic. Or put. This is how they looked. This is the same writing that you see here. Look at these brothers. Got corn rolls. Got that nappy beard. He go that afro looking like Taj wearing his fez on his head with his afro sticking out underneath it. <laughs> these are Phoenicians bringing this. King. Phoenicians. These are us. The Moors. This is in the Louvre um, in Paris. Us on boats, ships. This is how the Phoenicians looked. Carthaginians, the Phoenicians, the Etruscans. The Minoans. We was in all of those places. This is how we looked. This is proven. This is the coin of Hannibal. This is how Hannibal looked. Look at them twists and locks in his hair. That nose, their lips. Hannibal. We go Phoenician bus from the Phoenician period in Spain. This is housed in the, the Miso de Cardes in Spain. The Phoenicians had the same sarcophagus as the ancient Egyptians. How is that possible? Because the Phoenicians are the tribe of Ben Ben, always known as the followers of Ben Heru, the sons of Heru. 
The Phoenicians are nothing more than the sons of Heru. They came from out of ancient Egypt. The priesthood of the Ethiopians, known as the Abyssinians, known also, also as the Tanesians. Same people. Yes. Those writings that you said, so that's different than Paleo Hebrew, which is the old form of Hebrew. No, it, it's the same. And I'm getting ready to show it to you in a second. It's the exact same, the exact same scripts, exact same language. The exact same wow. language that, that the Algonquins spoke here in the Americas and the exact same language in which that was spoken amongst all of the Algonquin tribes, what I made mention of earlier. Hold on a second, y'all. All right. Okay, so right here it says, then there was Canaanites and Hebrews who lived in the middle. But we can never differentiate between the two. Of course not, because they both were Semites. <laughs> this is how they looked. This is in Assyria. How the Hebrews looked. This is what it was meant by Nasir um, um, saying, the president Nasir in 1952 saying that the Jews, you, you left here black, you come back white. What, what the hell? We can't accept you. <laughs> hell, Adolf Hitler said the same shit. In the 19th century, brother. <laughs> Adolf Hitler said it. Adolf Hitler said. <laughs> Adolf Hitler said that they have the crown jewel. The Europeans have the crown jewel in America, and the soldier said, "What you mean by the crown jewel? Who are you talking about?" And Adolf Hitler said, "The Negroes. The Negroes are the Jews." Mm. Wow. So I have a question. So Adolf Hitler was killing the. He killing off the fake Jews, the same ones that Nasir said. <laughs> the same one that's in your Bible in the book Revelation 3 9. There's some that say they're Jews, but they're not. They are the synagogue of Satan. <laughs> so, is that why there's so much confusion between the Hebrew people right now saying that they're 
and hermetic, but they are still the same people? Yeah, yeah, it's the same people. Shemetic, hermetic, all of them mixed in so much over these years that just like we just said, they can't differentiate between the two. So we just say we Phoenician, we're Moors. So here it is. Let's continue. You don't see what I'm talking about. Ooh, the boy is getting good. Check this out. So here it is. Ancient Moorish American land documents. One of the earliest Moorish Canaanite Phoenician documents pertaining to the right possession and inhabitation of land by blood in the Americas. Describing the annexation of American continent to the Iberian Peninsula, both being present Moorish and ancient Carthaginian Empire is the board stone in Kasmaska, um, Kukanit, um, Cape Cod Bay, New England, New um, Massachusetts, which exhibits and identifies the Moorish seal of Hanno Bay. Who is Hanno Bay? Hanno Bay is Hannibal. Circade 500 BC, written and inscribed on the North Semitic Iberian Punic script, which is the later form of the Moabite characters. What is of the Moabite characters? And um, characters as the Moorish, Moabites, and Canaanites are known to have carried their Semitic tongue to Spain. Evidence of these Ancient Moorish documents can be found in the, in the um, archives of the Bourne Historical Society, the Book of Palimot, an archaic and rare manuscript housed in the libraries of bishops of the Roman Catholic Church, containing priceless information on the ancient Ogam writings. Now, Ogam writings, you will see what that is. The celebrated book was assimilated assembled about 800 years ago from the collection of miscellaneous manuscripts. The last manuscript included the codex called the Ogam Track that dealt with 70 variances, 70 variances of ancient Moabite. Iberian script collective called again Ogam, meaning groove writing, a cunic form. More specifically, the 502 um, folio vo um, um, vilu, long leaf, or leaf skin, um, books of Baliman is housed in the library of the Irish Academy in Dublin, Ireland. All right. Here it is. A Harvard professor and ethnographer, Barry Fall, stumbled upon explanations in Gaelic of the ancient Moorish, Moabite, Canaanites here in the Americas, y'all. Alphabets of America. Alphabets of America. The alphabets that you speak are Phoenician. Do you know that? <laughs> the alphabets that you speak are Phoenician. Alphabets of America which again was more by Phoenician, Iberian. Well, I, know that, I know, but goddamn, we're going to get it today. <laughs> by a bishop of Keldir called Finn Mac Gorman, who died 1160 AC. Historic, um, um, his compilations is called by scholars the Book of Lincer, housed by the Library of University of D um, Dublin, Founder of Queen Elizabeth I in 1591 AC under the name of College of Holy and Undivided Trinity near Dublin. Subsequent ancient Moorish American documents were recorded in Pennsylvania. You want to say that again? Subsequent ancient Moorish American documents were recorded in Pennsylvania. Moors from the West, Farinis, Established the city of Pennsylvania, including prehistoric Philadelphia. These writings, or excuse me, these deeds are confirmed in the legal um, documents titled Subsequent Hannah, which is where the name Pennsylvania comes from after Penn, but that's what's called um, Susquehanna. 
stones was written in the Moorish Iber wait, hold on, these stones was written in the Moorish Iberian Punic matching the Moorish um, um, Phoenician inscription from Sardinia and the Moorish Ogam on the stone building in New England. Now where's New England? New England is 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 New York, right? That's Connecticut. Yes. That's Mass. That's um, uh, Massachusetts. That's New England. All that's New England. Yes. Yeah. This group. Check this out now. This group of Moors are distinguished from. Some, somebody close. Somebody mute their background, please. We got to get this, and it got to be clear. All right, this group of Moors are distinguished from, for example, the Moorish Wabanaki tribe. What? what? The, the Wabanaki or Moors? Oh, shit. What? What? Well, huh? <laughs> so you see how I'm putting all this information together coming from various books. This is the information. Here it is. It says, the example that the Moorish Wabanaki tribe of New England which is the same tribe in which that Benjamin Banneker is from. The word, his last name Banneker is Wabanaki, as we told you last week. Entered the Mississippi from the Gulf of Mexico. Hold up. Entered the Mississippi from the Gulf of Mexico. So the same Wabanaki tribe that came from out of Mississippi, as we've seen that all these other tribes came from Mississippi, came from out of the Gulf of Mexico. In other words, they were who? The Olmecs. Penetrated the inland to Iowa. Uh oh, this is why the writing of Phoenicians was in Iowa and the Dakotas and westward along the Arkansas and Shimmeron River to leave behind inscript records, documents of their presence. Other Moorish tribes from Iberia reached the Gulf of St. Lawrence in introducing various Moorish Latin navigational terms in the language of the Moorish tribes known as Algonquin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Their descendants employed dialects in part from the ancient Moabite tongue of Phoenicia. Mauritia, Moroccanum, Libya, Utechnet, um, Utica, Sidon, Tari, Carthagene, etc. Moorish seamen, along with many Moors from Phoenicia, mm -hmm. today inaccurately called Farsian, um, um, Persian, excuse me, from Persia, Persia, today inaccurately called Persians, live near the mouth of the river of New England, as um, as at North Salem, as in Salem, in Massachusetts, where they burnt the witches at, allegedly. The witches were the bitches who is nothing more than our doctors and um, teachers, shaman healers, our oracles on a branch of the Merriman River in southern New Hampshire. Next, we have the Moorish Moabite Americans, Iberian Punic Semitic tongues and coffin inscribed on the American Moabite American document from circa 800 to 200 BC called the Grave Creek West Virginia Tablets. The tablets was found in 1838 AC at the depths of 60 feet in a large burial mound at Grave Creek, West Virginia. We have a Merrimack River here in Missouri, St. Louis. To be yeah. exact. There it is, Brother L. Uh, 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 uh. That's ridiculous. Yeah, so we'll continue on. So once again, what language do we speak? <laughs> it says as such, the West the Washtar has been associated with the Eastern Algonquin Native Americans having acquired in Ancient Egyptian, as well as a Punic script and vocabulary that have appeared in the epigraphic records of North America. These are the epigraphic areas of North America, or what we're talking about here. So, you get the book, The Moabite Keys by Cosmo L. 
if you look over here to the right, the comparative tablet um tablets of ancient alphabets, look at the Arabic, look at the Syretic, look at the Hebrew, look at the Phoenician, look at the ancient Hebrew, and look at the Greek. If you notice the ancient Phoenician, the um, Phoenician and the ancient Hebrew are identical. Look at it. Everybody can see the ancient Phoenician and ancient Hebrew? Or Phoenician and ancient Hebrew? Look at it. It is identical. Yeah, they're very close. Huh? Yeah, they're, they're very close. Like, I only see a few things. I don't know if those three dots are letters, too, but that's about the only thing I see missing. Yeah. That's yeah. So ancient Hebrew, which is Paleo-Hebrew, and Phoenician, and ancient Greek are the exact same language. <laughs> there was no ancient Greek. There was only ancient Creek, as in the Yamasi Creek. <laughs> the Greeks didn't exist. That was a falsified culture. It was only the Yamasi Creeks. The Yamasi Creek, as we showed you, spoke Phoenician, ancient Hebrew. Yeah, that's both the Cosmos. Yes, that's both the Cosmos L. Yes. Now we're gonna get deeper. Here is the Moabite script. Look at the Moabite script and look at the phonetic um, of the Phoenician. Identical. Look at it. It is identical. Look at it. The Phoenician and the Moabite script. Identical, y'all. Everybody can see that? So the Moabites spoke Old Hebrew, Paleo Hebrew, which is known as Phoenician, which is all derived from ancient Egypt, from the Demotic and the Moretic script, hence the Meru. Hence the reason why we are known today as in America as the original intent of the word America is Meru. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is that why they they sealed everything in almost Arabic, right? Those two because so identical from the past. And then the modern day. Is a little bit, but not as different. But different. Right. We won't. We won't be using the script in which that we use will be the Moabite script, which is the Phoenician. We will not. Which is the Paleo Hebrew or Aramaic. We will not be using um, modern day Hebrew because it's not. It's not sufficient enough for us as Moabite people. Understood. I asked about the right. so much alike. Right. It's still the same. It's still on the base on the olive. I can't hear that last um comment, guys. I was saying, is the base still on the olive sound? Yeah, the sounds will be the same. So, here is the script. This is the Phoenician alphabet, 10,050 BCE. So, we've been speaking this language for a long time, but now they just call it Algonquin. <laughs> That's the trick. Remember, I showed you before the science last week of who the Cherokee were. And the Cherokee is part of the same tribal connection, right? All right, let's let's look at that right quick, cause y'all might have forgot. So I got the connective dots. No, that was a great class, and that was a great. One. Appreciate that. So here it is: Old World roots of the Cherokee. 
old world roots of the Cherokee, how DNA, ancient alphabets, and religion explains the origin of the America's largest Indian nation. Oh, well, hold on. What's the connection? The Cherokee are an important connection between the old world and the new world. There are many names that the Cherokee are related to, like who? Number one, Phoenicians. Oh, shit, there it is. Number two, Moors. Oh, number three, Berbers. Number four, Punic. Number five, Canaanites. Number six, Jewish, or better yet, the Jews, the Israelites, the Hebrews. Number seven, the Melungeons. Number eight, the Carthaginians. Number nine, Turks. Number 10, the Greeks. The number um, 12, um, Mesopotamian. Number 13, Egyptians. Number 15, North um, African. Number 16, Nanakos. Number 18, 17, excuse me, um, the Guineas. Number 17, um, Cubans. Number 18, um, what is that, 19, um, Portuguese, number um, 20, Creoles. Now, if you don't know, you would not realize that all of these are melanated, dark-skinned people that the Cherokee is, that their bloodline is made from, that they are. So we see that the Cherokee are Phoenicians. They spoke Phoenician. Here it is. Here it is. The name Iroquois in French derived or disputed origin and meaning, but most possibly came from the Algonquin word. So even the Iro the word Iroquois is Algonquin. Not the Algonquin is um the Iroquois is not no damn new tribe. The Iroquois on um, the Algonquin named the Iroquois that. <laughs> Because they are Iro they are still the Iroquois people. How could it um Cherokee talk to the people? Here it is. The Cherokee language is linguistically related to the language of the Iroquois. See, we keep getting it. We're getting all these connections. They can't lie to us no more. The lion days are over. That's why in Cherokee they say assalamu alaikum. The Cherokee say assalamu alaikum. Exactly. Why? Why? Why are they speaking Arabic Hebrew? Why are they doing it? See, there is no there's such thing. As, right. See, there's no such thing as a true Semitic language because remember, all of the languages come from out of ancient Egypt. The language of the Indo-Europeans, Africans, and Oriental numbers over hundreds each, with hundreds of dialects. There are, and there are generously concessions, only three Semitic languages with no more than four dialects. The Arcadian is dialect, the Hebrew, the Amharic, and Arabic. The reason for this is that the Semitic language are really variants of essentially black languages of who? Canaan and Phoenicia. Therefore, any attempt to find an original Semitic language may lead you back to Canaan and Phoenicia. The conclusion is inescapable. There is no such reality as a Semitic language. What we call Semitic language is really dialects, variances of African Hermetic languages, and you can find this in the Metro Nature Volume 1 by Raoul Nafan Ahmed. And here is the script. Alif, Beth, Gimel, Dallas, He, Wah, Zane, He, Keh, Yod, Kef, Lam, Min, Noon, Samet, Ain, Pa, Sadi, Gulf, Res, Oris, that's his head, Sin, Ta. These are the 22 letter script. It's 22 because you have 22 amino acids, so we only use 22 scripts to describe and actually set off the 22 amino acids in your body. Those are the building blocks of life in you. The 22 amino acids are the building blocks of life. And so we have 22 alphabets to identify each amino acid. And we gave the names to it, which is often symbols of the physical body. This is the true science what we're talking about right here. So here it is. I lift. A Moabite I lift is perhaps the most powerful symbol in the ancient Moabite Abjad, and it is the first visual characteristics and phonetic sound associated with the almighty power God or Allah. The phonetic value of this symbol is carried through many other ancient languages with very little change in meaning. Alongside of the symbolism is the attachment of a numeric um, value of the equally important significance. For example, Dalif is the first 
character in the word Allah, the supreme being in the language of Arabic. In fact, a list in Arabic is the same as a list in Arabic. In Hebrew, a list in Hebrew is in Phoenician and in Moabite is the same as a list in Arabic. It's the same. Likewise, in the ancient Moabite language, a list is the first letter in the word L. So you are L, that means a list, this letter is the is your last name L, the first of it. A list and lamb. A list and lamb. So this symbol, which looks like a sideways A, oh, only thing English did was turn it right side up and it became A in your alphabet. A is for Apple. You see that? Turn it sideways, that's an A. <laughs> that's where the A come from, yes. So yes, you are speaking English even today, phonetic language, right. ancient Egyptian language. I was just gonna say when people say that, that the English or uh, you know so-called German language is a bastard language, then that can't be true. Then no, it's not. How can these? How can you think about this, y'all? We was already here. Eighty-five percent of our ancestry was already here. Then we have these um, little bit of crackers filing in at the time, coming in, coming in. They had to sit among us. They had to learn our language. We didn't have to learn this. Yeah. They had to learn how to talk to us. We didn't have to learn necessarily to talk to them because we were more of us. So the Moabite Alif, like all the lettering of the Abjad, are derived from the ancient comedic written system of metronetra, heretic and synetic script. The Metronetra Heretic Moabite. This is what you're studying. Is the Metronetra Heretic Moabite. This is our language, which is Algonquin. This is it, y'all. Bath. Bath literally means house and associated with the family and families living in houses. The symbol appears to be a real value of a dwelling and the opening being the entrance. Right? This is where the letter G comes from in our alphabet. Or better yet, you can turn this upside down and you got a B too. <laughs> you see that? Oh, Ali, quick question. Yeah. Uh, the possum, uh, the possum creek stone, it's got those same markings on it. I know. That's what I'm talking about. This is, this is our language. This is the language that we spoke here before these crackers came and took us off our square. You said what stone was that? The possum leaf stone. The, the possum leaf. Stone. Wow. Uh, it's in Oklahoma. Right. Black Wall Street. Uh, Mountain Creek Stone. Okay. Hey, All right. the book that Aline just mentioned, Roots, in the, it's inside of that book. Roots of the Old World. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. But as you see, turn this symbol upside down, and that is the letter B as you will write it within English. This is the letter A that you will write in English. So the only thing they did was turn out the letters upside down and told us that it was something else. <laughs> this is Gimel. Gimel in Arabic literally means camel. This is derived from the ancient symbol for camel in the Sadatic script. So, all right. This is Dalit. Dalit, which means door. This means the opening. Same thing as door, we get the word dimension. All right? This is also a womb, symbolically. Can be seen as a doorway to life on the physical plane, or a doorway in order to exit the physical plane. But this symbolizes a door. And this is D, Dalit, as you see, like a D. <laughs> so 
See, they did change too much up, y'all. As you see, the A is the same, the B is the same, the D is the same. They're going to give you back your language that they flipped upside down. <laughs> Right, this is, hey, this is a symbol of a man holding both his hands up with his palms facing out. All right, hey is a window traced back through Hebrew. All right, in Metronetra, this is basically the same symbol, which actually means praise, that bears resemblance to the Moabite hey, known as Daos, or Dua, or Tua which can be found in the symbols of Kemet. Wa. The Jews say Va. It's not Va, it's Wa. All right, this is the same as you would have is the W or the U. This, this symbol is derived from the synetic va, wa, yu, which carries the meaning of mace, according to E. Isaac, Institute of Semitic Studies, Princeton, New Jersey. This is Zane. Right, this is Semitic language too, um, ancient Phoenician language. The letter Zane is eventually found its way in Greek and Latin letters. Heath. Heath or Chet. Whichever way you want to pronounce it. It's the eighth number, and this one looks like a number eight. <laughs> a representative of infinity and his esoteric significance was prevalent in commit and distinct cultures. This uh, Hebrew game called Check Check. Yeah, Check. Yeah, it's the same. Except we write ours like this. This, this is the Moabite language. We had tech. Resembles an X with a circle. Same symbol that you see on X Men nowadays. Hey, right. I'm uh huh. What's the connection of uh, between the Latin language and this language? Um. Some of the letter scripts, as I'm talking about, can be found in Latin, and it can be. And it, um, we can apply it uh, with our lettering into the Latin, and it would still make sense. A lot of these letters found their way into Greek, and we know that Greek is nothing more than a predecessor to Latin. As you see here, look at the ancient Greek letters to the right and the ancient Phoenician and ancient Hebrew letters. As you see here, they're nearly identical. Can you see that? Yeah, I see that. That's, that's, that's right, right on point right there. Right. So, so when you get the letters as it goes from so-called Greeks, go up into Rome, they get the letter script in which that is from ancient Greece, which is actually nothing more ancient Hebrew, which is nothing more than ancient Phoenician, which is ancient Egyptian, Kemite, the Metronetra. One in the same language. All right, this is Yod. More by in the Hebrew Yod, a light also function as a vowel for the exception that they use a long E sound. 
or vowel sound. In addition to being a consonant, this is also true for the Arabic ye. In fact, Moabite, Arabic, and the Hebrew all share the same three letters. Share the three letters that function as vowels and consonants. They are alif, va, awa, and ye. This is how you know you speak the same language. Cough. This is the symbol cough. If you look at cough, you see that cough is not the K. The symbol for cough is the same as the K symbol in English, except it's backwards. Cough means the hand is opening hand, more literally the palm of the hand. The connotation of the open hand is gentleness. However, it should not be confused with passivity. The open palm can be seen to symbolize seeking something from another, but it can also be a sign of outreach one hand to aid another. This is the Arabic letter for golf. To the right, this is the comedic symbol of ka, which is in the center, and kaf to the left can be written in this format or in that way too. So we see that the letter is also reminiscent of the ancient Egyptian symbol of ka, which builds the same phonetic sound as the Moabite, Halif, um, um, Hebrew, and Arabic kaf. Moabite, which is Phoenician, Hebrew, which is Phoenician, Arabic, all connects back with the same letter, Kaf, which is Ka, from out of ancient Egypt. Lam, a landed. Lam is the same letter that's found in Arabic, it's found in Hebrew, it's found in our um, language, um, in our dialect, which is Moabite. The lamb is the depiction of the shepherd walking staff or the lamb guard. The guard is sometimes pointy staff or stick, other weapon instrument used to prompt or guide something along. There is also the standard measurement of the ruler, which bears in mind the letter, the glyph for the letter L in metronature. The letter L symbolizes the lion of all things, the ruler or the king of the jungle. In fact. L and R are one and the same. The letter R and the letter Lamb or L is one and the same. So there was no reason to put the R into the script because it's the L in this way. At least not in the way in which that we're thinking of the letter um, R. I'll show that in a second. The synetic lamb from which that the Moabite lamb was um, derived resembles the Moabite lamb with the exception that it is usually inverted or laid flat. The directional change in the letter is more move from script to script is common. So you see the lamb to the right, which looks like a curved um, um, staff or the hook of a shepherd. Or the L, which looks just like a damn L in the language today, which we have in, in English. But it's called lamb. Here you have mean. Mean. Mean symbolizes water. The comedic um, noon, um, M, sound M, a noon is the water. M. The sciatic um, mem is the same. Noon. You have the same in comedic. And you have the Hebrew noon here in the center crown. This is our noon here to the left. This is Shemak. Or seen is equivalent to the Arabic scene and is most notably known to represent some sort of staff or support. Matter of fact, we call this the Dajid. 
That's where this symbol comes from. It's from the ancient Egyptian Dajid, which symbolizes the backbone of Osiris. Your spinal column. You 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 definitely write about uh, you definitely write about that because that's that's nothing but a pillar. Exactly, the pillar of life. That's what it's called, the pillar of life. And uh, the, the, that that um, yeah, that that is an everyday use word still to this day. Like that's our favorite thing to say. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> This is Ain. Ain is the same as Ain in Arabic, the same as Ain in Hebrew, the same as Ain in Phoenician, same as Ain is Moabite. It's talking about an actual eye, one eye that is. So in Egypt you see the eye, but it's called the Wajed. But the white jet becomes white jetta, white jetta, washita. That's the eye. Yeah, pa. The more white pa is derived from the similar sign or simple symbol similar to the eye, and so far it represents one of the faculties of man. It symbolizes the symbol of the sciatic glyph, that of the mouth. This symbolizes the mouth. So Hebrew shall carry the meaning in addition to the definition, opening, entrance, speak, command, etc. The pa is the same as pata, the opening that you find in Hebrew, in Kemetic, and Arabic. The opening. In Kemetic, the divine word is known as pata or pata. Is representative of the divine word. Ptah was the divine force of creation, who in the creation story spoke the words that was brought um, this world that came into being. That brought this world into being. And we get the word Fatiha, the daughter of Muhammad, Fatima. And we know that there's no 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 P in Arabic. Oh, as they would say, just like phone. Phone starts with a P, a P H O N E. But phonetically, that's F O N E. So P and F are phonetically interchangeable. And it symbolizes here the mouth of God to the mouth of man. This is Sad. Sad. Right? This represents a hook, fish hook. It also symbolizes sad, bizarre, fetus in a fetal position. You have cough. Cough. Cough symbolizes the back of a man's head and a symbol of a needle going through the eye. As you see here, you look at the human brain, then you look at the symbol of cough, you can see that they are identical. It represents the brain, the back of the head. Yes. yes. I believe it was another class or something where you was talking about the connection of um this and the word copy. Right. Or like monkey see, monkey do. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, okay. this is exactly it. Exactly. It is also means time as the revolution of sun is used to calculate time. Right, Hebrew, Greek, and Arabic agrees that the sound for this letter is the Q.
All right. The modern Hebrew and Arabic name for this letter is Gulf, or parent root. Ancient Hebrew Research Center, Jeff A. Blank, um, Bender. Bender. <laughs> Next is Resh. Resh comes to mean head, and derived from the ancient Sadic glyph of Resh. Consequently, represents a head. The meaning of this head glyph is that of a ruler or chief. Until this day, we shall use this symbolism illustrated in the phrase of the head of government and other phrases like it. In modern Hebrew Arabic, the word for head is resh or, or, res, or resh. Likewise, in Arabic, ra is used for rep of president or ruler. Right? In modern Hebrew and Arabic, that's what this is. Right? However, the symbol of Ra is that of the eye of Ra and also known as the eye of Hara or Horus. All right? So, Resh is connected to Ray or Ra, which means the solar or the disc or the head. It's talking about the disc of the sun around the head. It's talking about the halo, the divine glow around the head. Then you have Sheen, which looks like a W. Quite clearly, Rosh looks like a backwards P. Q looks like a Q. <laughs> Side look like an R. You see how they mixed up our shit? Same looking symbols, but they started giving some of them different names to make it seem as if they made up a language. But they never made up a language. They just took what we had and modified it. Shin is the second letter to the last in the ancient Moabite abjad. And it carries the phonetic sound of shh. This symbol is almost universally accepted as meaning tooth or teeth as an example of tooth and teeth as a result. All right, and the last one is tall. Right. As you see, it looks like an X, or if you turn it to the side, it looks like a T. So this is where the Phoenician connection comes in at into the English language, as they call it, a bastardized language. They have taken our symbols and flipped it and made it something else in which that now we're speaking. But the same lettering as you see, the majority of the same lettering is found in our ancient Moabite script, which takes us back to ancient Egypt. This symbolizes copies of the four cardinal points. Since the sciatic ta, a ta is said to be a marker, sign, or a symbol of covenant. As a marker, we shall see the origin of the phrase X marks the spot. Likewise, we can see the origin of the symbol of covenant or contract. For if one cannot read or write while signing a contract, an X will significant suffice as a signature. As a matter of fact, the ancient Hebrew Ta carries the meaning of just that, signature. All right. Any questions concerning anything they be going over? Question. Yes. Yes. 
All right. So if we look at our pronouns in Algonquin and apply our Moabite script, then you begin to see something happen. Ni, I, ki, you, niki, anika, he or she, ni luna, we, kiluna, we, kilua, you all, ni kamo, they, will, head, hopi kona, shoulders, kiku, knees, Kiwisita, toes. Malak, hair. Malakin, body hair. Mama Ona, eyebrows. Ripita, two for teeth. Shikan, a shikana, bone. Takwi lincha fist. Your hands are fist. Tawipia body bodies. Tutea stomach, abdomen, belly. Sita foot, feet. Shitonga lips. Shitanga, Shitanga, that's the lips. Nooka, arms. Hawikat, Hawikata, legs. Leg or legs. Ahita, yes, formerly yes. Owima, mother. For Queen Mother, we would call is Niga Bewima. Niga Bewima is Queen Mother. Niga Bewima is Queen Mother. Malikit, a Malikitwa, father. Nasu, brother. Nasu Mayati, sister. Kawiti, one. So, Ehate Washitoi Ish, our official greetings for officials. Isla Fahulan, peace. How, are your, how is your spirit? We can say Assalamu Alaikum or Shalom Alaikum or Isla by yourself. Hey, this is actually a legitimate um, greeting of the Algonquin of our Lenape ancestors. Wali Kishku, good day. Kalamasi Hak, are you well? Can also means how are you? Nalamasi, I am well. Or I am, or I'm well. Achiwan. Achiwan means strong, spiritus. Achiwan. Ashkakim to teach, to instruct. Ashki Kiktom, a teacher. So, what we would do is now add the language as we see here that we have learned, and there's only 22 letters, not 26, so actually it would be easier for you to do. Two, your own language and that would give you the language and the script that we actually had here in North America amongst the Algonquin, which Washo is Algonquin, as we showed and proved already.
All right. These are the sciences, y'all. You said Islam is how yourself. Say it again, brother. Al. You said that Islam is how is yourself. Um. No, we say um, um, Nulamasi. I am well. We said um, Kulamasi oh, right. Hak. Kulamasi Hak. Kulamasi Hak. Okay, Kulamasi right. Hak. Yeah, Kula okay. Masi yeah, Hak. Yeah, which means, are you well? It can also mean, how are you? Okay. Yeah, I was saying that um, Isla Fahulan means peace. How is your spirit? Okay. Um, or you can just say, Assalamu Alaikum, as we say, or Shalom Alaikum, which would be basically the same thing within our language. Okay. Coming from the language in which that we talk about, which is more by a Phoenician language. Okay. Even in, even in ancient Egyptian, um, it would be sham, sham. Sham is the same as salam or shalom, but it's ancient Egypt. Sham. Like somebody say, squeeze my shami. <laughs> Don't squeeze my shawmy back in the days. Sham. E R M. Does that mean peace? Great. Right. Sham means peace. Okay. All right. Please don't squeeze the shaman. Peace. <laughs> Ain't that something? Yeah. I got all our little words, man. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Speaking better than that all the time in English form. <laughs> yeah. Well, the word mother is actually ancient Egyptian. It comes from moot hair. M U T H E R. You put moot hair together, M U T H E R is mother. <laughs> M O T H E R. But it comes from ancient Egypt, moot hair. <laughs> you know, that's funny because it sounds like Medea. Like my great grandmother was Medea. So right. He, wow. Which means mother. Right. Means mother. Right. Also means meteor. <laughs> the word meteor comes from Medea. It was a Greek word. It was a goddess. Right. It was a goddess, Medea, who was once again, which dealt with uh, propaganda, dealt with media shit. Same thing that we see nowadays. Makes sense. So this is, this is us putting together, because remember, if we go to... Let's go to the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. In the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, what does it say? It speaks of the indigenous people have the right to their languages. So in not so in not in not so far here in the future we will be speaking our own tongue, our own language. The Washington Moabite language. Algonquin language with the script to match, which has been found all over America. So they can't say that we speaking something different. Is what is documented. What are you talking about? It's right there. I can show you the scripts. But you won't know what I'm saying. Only a, a, a linguist would know what I'm saying. And even then, they will get caught up because we have certain other words in which that would 
be involved and wish that would be dealing with some other sciences too. It would be Algonquin, but it won't be perfectly just Choctaw or Lenape. This is a Choctaw Lenape language? Yeah, this is the um, Choctaw Lenape, which is Algonquin, Brother L, which is Phoenician. All right. Which is All Phoenician. Right. Yeah, it's the same language. Oh, you said Algonquin. Yeah, this is Algonquin. Algonquin is French. You say that the... Uh, right, Algonquin. The Algonquin. Right. Okay, let me get that. Let me get that. Right. The Algonquin. That's that's uh, that's how you pronounce it in their language. Algonquin. Oh, okay. And just became known in the French as Algonquin. But the Algonquin is the word. Okay. That's what they call it. Algonquin. Right, Algonquin. So all of these people that is part of the treaty and some of the others such as the Tuscaroya, such as all these other ones, it also was descended from us, as we showed you earlier, from the Yamasi, who is the mother, and so that means that the Omex will be the fathers, which is known as the she people. See, this is the mastership of what we have to do here. So I was talking about earlier, Brother L, um, you have to, somehow we have to get you on board because we would love for you to be the, um, I know I would, I would love for you to be the um, chief of language. Uh, I'd like to be that too. I'd love to be that too, brother. Yeah. And I would, and I would uh, also, I, would, I love doing that, you know. Right. <laughs> That's something I really love doing. Right. Man, so I can get among my people and speak my own language. Exactly. No, we we're not. We 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 be not the only people don't have a language. Okay, we got one now. You know, which we've been had it. Right, and it's right. We've been had it. You just took it away from us, and now we returned it. <laughs> That's the return I, I, of the ancient. That's the return of the ancient ones. <laughs> I would listen to Tasha. She, I don't usually listen to her that much, but this that time I had to listen to her because he was dropping the the festival about Halloween. And Thanksgiving, and she was saying no. The actually the Europeans got Halloween and Thanksgiving from us. Yeah, that's true. We we've been doing that uh, hundreds of millennia before they put shores on these on this land. Well, brother Al, you, you remember we we did we did um um we did um what you call it on that before we did um, yep. a show on that. Uh-huh. When, uh, when we was already practicing um, Thanksgiving, and then um, who made it a national holiday was John Hanson. John Hanson was a Moor. Right. So how the hell would John Hanson be a Moor, and, and he's celebrating, you know what I'm saying, Thanksgiving, um, his people defeat, if if that's what it, if that was the origin of it. Right. I mean, it doesn't that, make any sense. Because he said that uh, what the European did was was made a mockery of it. Right. Use it as a defeat right. of our people. Right. Well I showed you last week that the term Turkey was the clan. The Turkey clan was the clan of the Lenape. So hence we began to start calling ourselves Job Tom Turkeys by the seventies. All watching, right. Watching this shit on, on the damn um Jeffersons and the damn um good times. Well you job Tom Turkey <laughs> yeah. Alim, I want you to know you you dropping that sign something ridiculous today. God, we we got to we, we got to get this shit right. Ridiculous, brother. Say, we got to get it right. Uh, you came to let out all the secrets today. Oh yeah, that's why I say I, I'm wearing my Mason cap today. Go go okay, I'm wearing my Mason cap. I'm revealing this. I got to reveal it. I'm wearing my Mason cap today. <laughs> You can't see nothing else. You can see that. Oh yeah, that big square and compass. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. That's a little you can't see nothing else, but you can see that. That light shining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ain't nothing but a boy's symbol anyway. Exactly. 
And that's why I'm talking to and that's why I'm part of the Moorish right, because I can reveal this. Ain't nobody tell me, oh, no, brother, you need to shut up about them secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody well, tell me that. I'm a man, but now, so, you know, yeah, we both can show them secrets, tell them secrets, too. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, she it's probably does a little bit more politics and more science, knowing about how the English, like, all languages really are languages. Like, we ain't really... Right. Uh, Everything is really just a mind state that's been changed. Ain't nothing really been exactly. Changed. It's all just the mind state. So once you realize, right. uh, realize we ain't really going nowhere. We ain't changing. I our agree. Uh huh. Ain't do nothing. Right. I agree with you, brother. Yeah. Right. Mhm. That's what I'm saying. That's why you could have it. If you put a, a L or a B on the end of your English title, that just makes you an English lord. Right. That's a little deep, though. <laughs> but this one we talking about right here, the Turkey clan. Here it is, Lenape Indian tribe of the Delaware, and the symbol is the turkey. This is the Turkey clan. Later on, it becomes the Jive Tom turkeys that we see and that we keep that we heard all through the seventies from watching these black exploitation TV shows. Sure did. I can bear witness to that. And that was, and that, all, you know, all of that was bearing witness to the fact that we was the turkeys, or yet the Lenny Lenape people who are the Washita. You hear Todd say it all the time, those turkeys. Right? Todd, we bay, you say it all the time. All right, so I'm going to show this. All right, so now everybody understand the language in which that the Empress was talking about, in which that was yeah. revealed to us by Ravana, um, Professor Ravana Bay. We spoke with a Punic script. This is the Punic script that they're talking about, which is Phoenician, which is Moabite, and it was ancient Egyptian. And hence, as we showed you, it came and it is from ancient Egypt, from the Metro Nature. So we can no longer be tricked. We know the language in which that we spoke. We got the script. We got the tongue. We just need to put it together and begin to start writing it. So this is the language that we would teach our children, teach our grandchildren, so forth and so on. And they will be able to have their own language, just like the other people. Then you can go to court and say, I, uh, 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 oh, he need an interpreter. <laughs> mm-hmm. But by that time, hopefully we have our own court system set up. All right. So remember that, Joe, we were talking about also setting up the courts. I don't know who want to be over the court system because we have um, Prince Bay. Um, customary Supreme Court. We need someone to be over the court system um, and and basically prescribe the various positions for the court system so they're going to have to come up with the court system, um, the law books, the law system. Of course, that would be part of our language translated into English. So that would be a big job for somebody. I can't do it all. All right. So Brother L, obviously from you mastering the language, you can help with the um, information concerning um, producing our own laws. Okay. All right. In which that will correlate um, to the laws in which that we have, um, since we wrote the Constitution for them, then we will correlate it based on the Constitution based on the laws that we already had in the Iroquois Confederation. Summarizing the, the Constitution. Laws, right. Summarizing the laws in the Constitution uh, from, the, um, from the Confederation, Iroquois Confederation, as, they did the Constitu- as we did the Constitution for them. 
And we do the same for ourselves. The Treaty of Peace and Friendship, the third and sixth article of the Constitution, and so on. The Treaty of Peace and Friendship. Uh, uh, I mean, with, uh, I think me and Arisha, we were a little, uh, well, had a disagreement with Sabir uh, Bay. Right. Talking about over, over sign and, and a Moroccan kingdom. When we say right. no. No. Oh, he, 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 you know. I still got some of those law books you had gave them PDS you gave me a minute ago too, see, so I, you know if I email we can go over some things too as well. All okay. right, here we go. All right. Zephaniah. All right, Chief Zephaniah. So he'll join in with that. There we go. Exactly. Okay. All right. All right. Now y'all gotta write down your positions and um yeah. send me some type of, I don't care if the resume ain't number the paragraph. Give me send me something back so that we can um you know for we can know what positions each chief wants to um, utilize and utilize that. Okay. Uh, 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 my phone number is three one four six four four seven four two five. Oh, can you say that one more time, Chief L? Uh, three one four. It really is L Bay. Uh, three one four six four 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 two five. You'll give me a call tomorrow. Okay, got gotcha. you. Get on that mm-hmm. tomorrow evening. Yes, sir. I'm gonna be on California time, so. Oh, you're in California time. Okay, I say between. Are you back in Cali? Now, right now I'm in Florida, but by tomorrow I'll be in Cali. I've been traveling a lot, man. Oh, dang. Okay. Yeah, oh, Cali. 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 He's going back to Cali. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna come, I'm looking at some, some lots out there in North Carolina, though. As soon as I can find two lots next to each other, I'm getting it. Okay. Got to give me some more notebooks. Write stuff, more stuff down. When we go over that stuff, I want to write stuff down. Right. As you spell it out to me. Mm-hmm. Well, brother, we will get you. We'll have to get you on the computer for you can start seeing these presentations. Yeah, but Reese's Reese's been getting on my back about that. Yeah, said, yeah. Man, you got to get on. Man, you got to get on. Come on, L. You got to get on that. No. <laughs> yeah. 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 You. You do. You do. Got to get myself together so I get on that computer. Yeah. Yeah, peace, Chief for Sanji. Peace, brother Sanji. Yeah, I um messaged you a while back about those um chief positions. You never really got back to me about it, but I definitely just want to say since we brought it up, definitely still interested in that. Yeah, well, um, were you online when we talked about the various positions? Was just now? Um, no, we we talked about this earlier. Early? No, I wasn't online just yet. Okay. Yeah, I, um, I come online on my board. Right. I, I, okay. I'll go over it um again right quick. So I wanted to ask about that too. Now that you kind of reminded me, I've been noticing. Um, I thought class was starting at four, but you've been coming online a lot earlier lately. Yeah. Well, <laughs> chiefs. We have our chief meeting at two. And it's the same calling number. Yeah, and some of the chiefs and some of the chiefs um stay online. Um, till um, till um, till now, till six o'clock. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. So I can join those calls out too. Yeah, 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 right. All right. All right. All right. All right. So as we know, we talk about the um, we're talking about the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People, and it talks about how Indigenous people have the ability to not just form their own institutions, but also to um, be able to utilize our own language. And so this is why this is very important, because we're correlating everything to the Declaration, not because it's just the United Nations, but because it's a big document. I haven't seen documents like this, in a, you know, saying that is that spelled out, you know, I mean, these indigenous people made sure that they was able to put everything in here. You know, those 144 countries to put everything in here um, just so that we probably be ones that wake up. Right. 
You know, because I mean, if they are, they already had their nationality, so why would they be concerned about nationality for anybody else? They had to be for us. <laughs> right. Because we're the only people that don't have a nationality on planet Earth. Right. And that's why we catch so much hell. Right. Than anybody else. Right. So um, Article 14 says indigenous people have the right to establish and control their educational systems and institutions, providing education in their own languages in a manner appropriate to their cultural methods of teaching and learning. Indigenous individuals, particularly children, have the right to all levels of formal of education of the state without discrimination. States shall, in conjunction with indigenous people, take effective measures in order for indigenous individuals, particularly children, in, um, including those living outside their communities, in other words, not on the reservation, to have access when possible to an education in their own culture and provide it in their own language. Now, I mean, Article 14 is deep. That, I mean, you don't get no clearer than that. So, Brother L, you will be dealing with Article 14 of the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. Okay. And also, too, um, Chief um, um, Zephaniah. Yes, sir. All right. So, we have to get this together, y'all. We have no choice. Queen now Mother, or never. That's right, now or never. Queen Mother, do you have any comments you want to make on anything? Not really. I enjoyed the meeting. I learned a lot. Were you able to see the, um, the class? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I was saying, were you able to see the class? Yes, I can see. Oh, okay, good, 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 good. Excellent. So see, they try to trick us and separate that information. You know, well, no, that's Phoenician. Oh, no, that's Moabite. Oh, no, that's Egyptian. Oh, no, that's Algonquin. Oh, no. And they got us going back and forth historically saying, oh, no, this is just this. This is just got us like me working in a damn factory. Oh, you in export. Oh, you in import. Oh, you at the um, manufacturing. Oh, you in um, human resources. Oh, you in the same damn factory. <laughs> exactly. All you Negroes work for Walmart distribution. <laughs> but they caught up in, but they caught up in, oh, I'm in import, or oh, I'm in export, I'm in manufacturing, I'm in human resources. <laughs> and this is how we sound when it comes to this information, historical information. Linear thinking, man. That's all I see is linear thinking, and I'm tired of it. There's one thing Barack Obama did for us, boy. He signed the rights of indigenous people. Right. Just now, your, um, your life's long, getting long again, man. Huh. Man. He said he ain't never done nothing for, for so-called black people. Well, he did that. Right. You <laughs> right? Actually, that's all he needed to do was do that. Sign that damn paper. Yeah, sign that damn paper. That's all he needed to do. Yep. All right. Now, I know I'm supposed to, I've been going on. I'm supposed to have been going on with something else here. Let me see if I can pull it on up for the brother. Um, this is about these positions. I yeah, appreciate that. All right. Um, Sanji, let me um, get it for you. Um, Chief, uh, let me pull it down. Yeah, I'll start tuning in at 2 o'clock, you said. I, I thought it was like separate class that you needed, like, um, you know, the code to get in. <laughs> no, it's the same. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely turn up.
<laughs> All right, this is what we were talking about. Um, for those that want positions and know what they want to work in, work at, um, this is the areas that we we're talking about. The 12 departments, we're talking about the Department of Economics, Trade and Commerce, the Department of Law, Defense, and Justice, on its protectors, um, that would be the MUTI and the Sarif. Once again, that would be the Sharif, the MUTI, and the Marshals. I want to read that. Okay. Then you have the Department of Herbs, Health, and Healing. You have the Department of Agriculture and Food. You have the Department of Family Allegiance, which is dealing with treaties amongst indigenous people. You have the Department of Media and Freedom. You have the Department of Science and Universal Peace. You have the Department of Education and Truth. You have the Department of Transportation, Highway, and Telepathy. You have the Department of Library and the Archives of Wisdom. You have the Department of Embassies and Consulate. Remember, we need our embassy. We have our embassy. We need that up and running. So we need people to take those various positions. We need the Department of Social Duties and um, Interfaith Ministries. These are the 12 departments. Okay. Copy. I'm thinking education and truth. When I had um messaged you about it a while back, I was talking about um something along the terms of like chief of information or anything pertaining to um education. Right, right. You, you told me that. So yes. Yeah. Um, so that means that you will work very closely with Brother L, um L Bay, Brother L Fahim. Um, you work close with Chief Fahim and um, Chief Zephaniah because they've been dealing with the education because they're going to be dealing with the language. The language is going to be very important. Okay. Well, Zeph, who brought me in, I actually, um, we're, we're old schoolmates and stuff. He, we all from the same city. Me, him, Tupac, Zayed Bay, all of us, we um talk often, actually, so that would be pretty easy to do. Me and him. Well, all right. Friday. That's perfect. Outstanding. Right. Like old dude from the A team you say, I love when the plan comes together. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> I gotta talk to you a little bit more than brother Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean start start uh start with tomorrow really. I'm gonna be busy this evening, so you gonna have to um I got your email so I'm gonna have to send you this this information, this script, this information, okay? Okay, thank you. All right. And Brother Fah Fahim? Uh huh. Chief Fahim, I'm going to send you this information. Okay. Um, for the day's class. Since you don't have to, since you don't have the computer to look at everything. All right. All right. We'll, we'll do. All right. And um you'll you'll have it and that way you can um uh, research it and study it and everything. Okay. Uh, will all the chiefs be able to, will all the chiefs be on the phone? Besides, you know, Dr. Ellen, you're going to be probably busy, but will any of the other chiefs be able to get on the call with me and Fahim and Brother Sanji tomorrow? Is there yeah. Any other chiefs yeah, if they want to, just tell them the time. No, and that's not, I'm, I'm, at asking, the same time. Yeah, I'm asking if there's any other chiefs online. I don't know if there's any chiefs online that want to get in that call with us tomorrow. Right. I don't know because the other chiefs gonna be able to have to, you know, bring through these twelve departments. Right, yeah, yeah. I just took a screenshot of it. Right. So we, can start, we can start working on that tomorrow, ASAP. Yeah. Yeah, sure. What's, what's a good time what's a good time for you, brother? I'm free Ooh, I might be on a plane around three, but I'm free from like sun up all the way to like uh two o'clock. And then two o'clock. Okay, yeah. let's do that. Let's try to do this in that uh, sometime. Uh, are you free? Okay. Hmm. But even if let's, let's try to do this about around about one then. One to two, oh, you free up to two o'clock. Okay, let's do, uh, do this early. I said evening, so you, you, we got to do this early. Okay. Uh, 
or I could just catch up. You know, either way, we could figure it out. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm up tomorrow, so whenever y'all have it, I'm pretty sure I could join. Y'all just have to let me know a time. Yeah. Like I said, if I don't recognize your number, just leave on my answer, answer service, and I will get it. Gotcha. Hey, Fahi. Yes. We're going to figure out how to put that on your iPhone, man. It's real simple. Okay. It's the same with your computer as well. All you got to do is just change the code from the 7774 to the 7779. Okay. You're going to be able to see. Cause you, you, you could, I'm quite sure you contribute to a whole lot more if you can see the screen. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm still having issues dealing with computers and the iPhone. So, right. you know, just I have issues with it. I'm, saying. I'm not Can you still get into your email? Email? Um, I'm trying to do that. I'm going to work on that tomorrow. Get on the email. No. Uh, can, can you get into your email? Uh, I tried a couple of times. And I did something. Something I did. I don't know what it was. I did something wrong. It's asking, you for, uh, it's asking you for your for your account. Just say you forgot it and sign up for a new one. Okay. Okay. Matter of fact, Reaches. Yeah. I'm gonna get with you on that, brother. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, it's real. It's simple. You already got the app on your phone. I mean, uh, on your computer. Right. Just put it, just put it on your phone. We can go over it. I can walk you through it, man. Okay, we'll do it. We'll do that. Yeah. Because when he send you that email, it's gonna come up in the. You send him a video, uh, Aileen. Uh huh. You send him the class video. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Once you do that, Aileen. I mean, uh, oh my gosh, uh, <laughs> Fahim, <laughs> you'll be you'll be able to see it, but you. What you're going to get a glimpse of is what you should be seeing every week. Okay. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Would I and um, the clan mothers be able to work with the chiefs on some in these departments? Most definitely. Uh, yeah, yeah. And Matthew, what are the Yo, whatever departments in which um, y'all can lend a hand in. Yes, definitely, Queen Mother. Okay. All right. Okay. Great. Which one, which one were you interested in? Um, either the law or economics. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, so that means you would be working with um, Chief um, Dr. Ali or not? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. We can do the law, um, claim um, a queen mother. Um, right, and economics, the business. Right. Yeah, because that's our expertise anyway. We've talked outside of the, you know, the the group, but I really feel like that's where we need to be as the me as the clan mother and you as being queen mother. I think that would be up our alley because we want to try to get things situated and wrote down and listed for our people, so I think the law part would be very good for us. Right. So that means the law part that you'll work on would be very closely related to the education and the history, the heritage portion. Um, so that means really the law information will actually deal with the um, the Supreme, the customary Supreme Court, Indigenous Supreme Court, as well as also with the, um, the um, United Washington Law Firm. <coughs> Once we gather enough law information together, which we basically already have all of that information, we just have to put it into our wordage, you know, and um, our language, dialect, in order to, you know, to give it more um, bearing. All right. So, Queen Mother, do you want to have a meeting? Do you want me to call you tomorrow and have a meeting about it, or you yes, want to get with the rest of the Queen Mother on it? And um, you know, there I have a uh, Queen Mother who is a professor. With I'm sure she would love to work with the education, and right. she's also great with uh, social duties. Okay. Have, um, you know, there are uh, 
several who that's why I asked if we would be able to work with the chiefs in these twelve departments. It would be a great thing. Right. And the urban health and healing, I'm sure of someone who would work with that. Now agriculture and foods. Right. So I guess the first thing that we do, we'll take an assessment of the land in which that we do have and which that can be um, used for food and agriculture right now. Immediately, um, you know, it's wintertime. I mean, there's certain foods in which that can still grow, like mustard greens, turnip, um, uh, uh, collard greens, cabbage, you know, so... We can still grow food, and even inside your home, you can still grow tomatoes, um, right? You know, all of these things can still be grown in the home because it can be warm enough in the home to grow, you know? So we can still do some type of agriculture and food. So we would need someone who um, know the foods in which that is good in order to grow right now during all the seasons, get a list for all of the cheese. We can know what foods to utilize um, during the particular seasons and grow them ourselves. Find out how much land we have collectively, and that way we begin to start getting help on these various lands, so that we can begin to start doing more agriculture and food. Like we said, if our cash crop is going to be hemp, then we need to start growing it as soon as the spring um, hits, which is which is going to be real quick. You know, because you know, it ain't like it's really quicker really now. You know, um, you know, they don't start until December next month, but right now, you know, we're still getting 60 or 70 degree weather in North Carolina. Peace, Dr. Arlene. Yes, peace. Um, I wanted to talk to you. I had talked to Queen Mother about the hemp because I spoke with the CEO of um two companies about us becoming partner with them um i'm gonna probably have to get with you outside of the call but i did speak to them so that we can have a conference meeting all of us so everybody kind of be on the same page but i need to give you more information in detail after i spoke with the ceo of those two different companies that are distributors okay okay Thank you. And so just let me know when is a good time for me to call you so I can get you the update. Um, we can do it probably before your meeting uh, with the fan mothers and everything tomorrow if you want. Okay, that'll be good. Okay. Because I got to get back to him and let him know so we can all have a meeting together if right. this is something that we're going to pursue. Because they, right. are, they, would they do things on the demand and supply which I will go more into detail about that, but just wanted to kind of bring that up to your attention since you brought up the hemp tonight. Right. All right, so everybody look at this list, and please come back the next time that we'll talk with your, um, with an idea of where you want to connect that on Chief Allen. Yes. Um, I always wonder after we get off the the meeting, can we is it possible we can get a quick bill for like five, ten minutes? It's a few things I wanted to uh, talk to you about. Yes, that's fine. Alright, cool. You want me to just uh, give you a call? Yeah. Okay, yes sir. Darlene. Yes. I just want to say something funny keep happening, man. I was just on, um, somebody wanted me to do a podcast because I've been um, cooking out information and stuff. And so he wanted to speak to me about some things. And later on, I eventually started talking to him about that very same symbol, that Resh symbol. Mm -hmm. I was, um, he's Jamaican. And, you know, they look like saying Ross over there. Yeah, and that's, right. right. So I was literally disconnected. 
Right, and I was literally just talking about that. But the funny thing <laughs> that I want to mention to you, it's like you got a chapter on me, man. I notice sometimes when I'm having conversations, it'd be like the very thing you start talking about in class. Yeah. It's crazy. I think um, we were talking about... Um, we all connected, and it shows that we all need to... That's why we band together so that we can accomplish what we're accomplishing because um, it's coming. It's going to come to us. Right. Um, I see all these other people, but I don't see no nation building for real. Right. You know, and so that's the sadness of all of this. The only thing I keep seeing is separation. I'm this. I'm that. And it's not separate. You know, it's not. It's not being brought together. So that's what we have to do. Right. Not producing anything. No. No productive, productivity nowhere. The real nation states. Right. Tribe, real empire. You know what I'm saying? These things just ran with structures, ran with ideas, ran with morals and principles. These things, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is serious. It's real. Like, oh yeah, serious. I know many, I know plenty more that don't put their life, you know, had their life threatened because of this, or had their life, put their life in the line for this knowledge and information. Yeah. In specific. Yeah, niggas been threatening me for 30 years, and I'm still here, so. Exactly. You feel me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> we'll point it out, and won't stop, can't stop, uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> yeah. And it's sick, son. And it's cook, son. All right, so um, Dr. Asim just sent me this. Winter gardening, 22 vegetables you can grow in the off season. So let's look at these 22 vegetables, all right? Winter gardening at home. Some vegetables, when planted at the right time, protected with care, can grow during the typical off season. Winter gardening won't require a lot of work either, or watering and sunlight are often least vital. All right. Um, when it's cold, the crop you yield may appear smaller as a result, but you have tasty vegetables at home whenever needed. This kind of gardening allows you to make the cold season count and enjoy a space of all year round. No need to track your local grocery store when the when it's out cold. So let's let's look at some of this. All right. Some of the plants. Let's see what they got. Come on here. Let me let me see the plants. Okay, there we go. Like I was saying, potted winter plants. Some plants grow well in pots, which will allow them to grow all year round. Usually, these vegetables require the warmth and the growing them the best in pots indoors or in heated greenhouse for protection. The easiest planted pots to grow during the winter includes beans, carrots, cucumbers. Lettuce, peppers, potatoes, radishes, spinach, squash, strawberry, and tomatoes. And I know about tomatoes because I've actually grown them during the winter time, so that's how I know. All right? So the those potatoes, vegetables. The potatoes, Dr. Mm -hmm. Arlene, because um, we did it during the summer. This summer, one potato will yield up to six so i had planted like four potatoes and i pulled them a little too early but we had like almost 14 or 15 potatoes just off of four mm -hmm. excellent all right if you have a greenhouse you can also do the cabbage family such as the broccoli the cabbage kale and brussels sprouts right Out outdoor winter food includes Onions, parsley, lettuce, spinach, and garlic. So even if you don't have a pot or a greenhouse to grow winter crops or vegetables or a garden, you can actually grow um, uh, the typical winter salads would be um, arugula, mustard greens, winter mixed lettuce, and more. And like we said, the onions, Parsley, lettuce, spinach, and garlic you can grow. All right, so 
Uh, winter time, you can grow asparagus, mm. arugula, as we said, beets, broad beans, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, carrots, collard greens, garlic, kale, leeks, machi, lettuce, in particular the lettuce would be um, miner's lettuce, mustard greens, onions, um, bok choy, parsley, peas, potatoes, spinach, spring onions, uh, Swiss chard, right, so those are the 22, all right, so um, this is an excellent, y'all can find this information in the chat from Dr. Azim, this is a good article, we need it, and um, every chief, every national that's online needs to get a copy of that um, article and keep it somewhere real nice and tight. Print it off your computer and keep it somewhere real nice um, in a nice folder or something so that you can have this type of information because you never know what can happen, but at least we'll know what foods that we can grow during what season and during what time, all right? Like I said, if we can make an assessment of the land in which that we have, then that would give us a good ability in order to um, basically just to assess um, what crops that we can grow on on the lands at this particular time period, you know. And if people need uh, food, we can actually mail the crops through the mail. You can still do that. Dr. Lane. Yes. Brother North Star. Peace, Brother North Star. Yeah, question. Uh, see, uh, foods grown in their seasons and in their cycles, aren't we supposed to be eating in within those cycles? Yes, but as survival, we would have to alter those cycles for a time being. It's for survival. Understood. Understood. Thank you. So for survival purposes, it would be good to know this information. Mm -hmm. Not that you would have to eat outside of the seasonal time periods in which that is more effective, but having food such as garlic, that is effective no matter what season because garlic can cure um, heart attacks and strokes within a matter of 30 minutes, um, 30 seconds. Uh -huh. So you eat garlic any time of the year and it would do the same thing that it needs to do for the body. You don't have to wait in order to grow it just in the spring or summertime. Probably raw for a cook. You can actually, you can do it raw or you can actually roast them, you know, I, I roast about 10 bulbs of, of um, garlic um, um, daily and just eat them. Do you take them out the sleeve? Yes, I take them out the, um, out the, um, the, um, the sleeve or out of there. Um, I do that because if you leave them in there and roast them, they'll, get, they'll shrink. I don't, I don't like my shrunken. See, I normally do it in the honey. Okay, okay. But I don't I don't know. Is it more effective just to eat it after you roast them up and don't put the honey with it? I mean, I don't even use the honey. I just eat them. You know, I mean, I like them like that. I just eat them like that. Like, like, like they popcorn. Yeah, like they, yeah, they're good. Like they popcorn. And you don't have to worry about no headaches and no strokes because um, the garlic cuts down on, on all of that. Matter of fact, like I said, if someone is having a stroke, if someone is having a heart attack, you can give them garlic and cayenne pepper, and within 30 seconds, they'll be fine. That's 
All right. Are there any other comments that need to be made before we go? XL Bay, you you got a question? You got something to say? I got a, I got a, uh, well, I ain't got no questions, but no, I don't have any questions. I got to get up and finish this work I started. Okay. Break yeah. it off so I can get on the class, so. Okay, brother L. And I haven't ate neither, so. Right. You but, uh, yeah, I haven't eaten, um, eaten either. It's been, it's been about a while, been a little while now. So, brother L, I want East to you, brother L. I want to tell you, to East. All right. I want to tell you, I said, uh -oh. I said uh, goodbye, peace, family. That's what I said. That's right. That's right. There <laughs> you go. All right. And I tell you, watch some East to everyone. We'll see everybody here um, next Sunday, and hopefully everybody will have here. Um, the trade down patents, or what they want to do, help that, and then we can begin to start putting everybody in groups of who can work with who and keep up with each other, and then start bringing back um, assessments on what needs to be done. All right? All right. 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 Washington. Washington East. Yeah, Washington. Washington East. Yeah, I think Washington East. Yeah, I think Washington East. Okay. 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 Okay